Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. We have a very important discussion today. We are looking at courageous men. This world needs courageous men because before them, there are a lot of objectives to be met. However, before they, before they meet those objectives, there are a lot of challenges that they meet. We want to look at some examples of men who were courageous in life. One of them is Caleb. We get that one when we read Numbers 13, verse 23 to 33. In this story, we meet the Israelites just before they enter Canaan. It was very necessary for them to, to spy the land of Canaan. By spying, they were going to get a lot of encouragement and they have the desire to go and enter Canaan. So a, a decision was made to send the 12 spies to enter Canaan. So they went and explored the land of Canaan. They moved from place to place until they reached Hebron. It is in Hebron where they met large giants, big people who come from the Anakites. That city was greatly fortified. But despite that, the land was flowing with milk and honey, and they even carried large fruits. So when they came to give a report, the report was discouraging. The first part of the, uh, the report uh, showed that indeed the land was flowing with the milk and the honey, and they had some samples of large fruits. However, the second part of the report indicated that they could not enter Canaan. They were afraid because the land had Anakites. The Anakites came from the Nephilim. They were so large that they themselves felt that they were like grasshoppers. But Caleb stood up and he silenced the crowd. He said, we should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. He had courage. Courage is a masculine trait. From masculine men, we see aggressiveness. We see a drive. We see feminists. We see decisiveness. We see determination. We see re resoluteness. We see unyield unyielding steadfastness. We see courage. We see fearlessness, independence, competence, and efficiency. Brothers and sisters, these traits are necessary for any man to attain the objectives. But what is courage? Courage is a quality of mind which enables one to meet danger and difficulties with the feminist and the strength of spirit. Danger may mean death, it may mean physical harm, it may mean defeat, it may mean loss of prestige. So men of courage, you will drive forward and attain the goal before him. What lies at the base of courage is purpose, is insatiable need, is goal, is a vision, is a mission. It is the fear of God. Caleb was said to be a man of courage. 
He followed God wholeheartedly. Brothers and sisters, if you want courage, you must be a man who fears God. The Bible has some examples of people who feared God. I know of David. When the Israelites faced the, the, Philistian, the Philistians in the valley of Soreth, they melted out of fear. They could not face the, Israel, the Philistines because they had a, a big man, Goliath. Goliath was a descendant of the Anakites. He had six fingers, six toes. He was almost three meters tall. No one could venture or he, he, he had the courage to fight him. Up until David came. Because David had a relationship with God, he, he, he moved forward and attacked Goliath. David was also a man of courage. This reminds me of one time when we were just standing with a friend near the house. We, behind us was a peach tree which had fruits. A monkey came from Norway and passed between the two of us and picked a peach. We, we tended to move away from each other out of sudden fear. This monkey showed that it had courage. Courage is a trait that we need. What are the benefits of courage? It increases confidence. It looks at things in a more positive way as it removes fear. It inspires those around. Those who get experience at taking chances also end up with the courage. When we read from the book of Joshua, chapter 14, verse 10 to 12, we, le we learn about what Caleb did. The last part of the verse says, Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day you yourself heard. Then the Anakites were there and their cities were large and fortified. But the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as the Lord said. Caleb was given Hebron, and the country rested from war. This is the conclusion of what transpired. When the Israelites entered Canaan, they started allocating themselves the land of Canaan. But no one dared to go and take Hebron, because Hebron Yet the Anakites, it was fortified. But he, he, Caleb says, give me Hebron. Give me this hill country. What are the characteristics of Hebron? The first thing, it was mountainous. It was hilly. It was not fertile. It was unproductive. It was occupied by the Anakites. It had a lot of impossibilities. These are things that we have. There are certain things or goals that are before us. When we look at them, they seem to be unattainable. People run away from them. It reminds me of situations in schools as a teacher, whereby many people would run away, would avoid taking classes that are difficult to teach, classes that are noisy, classes 
with the students who are unruly, students who don't want to learn. But uh, teachers, when they start allocating classes, you see them choosing classes that are bright, classes with the students who are fast learners. Very few teachers will say, give me that class, that is a problem. What a lesson do we learn from Caleb? He is full of encouragement to men today. Give me this hill country. Give me Hebron. With God helping me, I can make it something else. Give me this hill country. This is the lesson that we learn today. It even reminds me of what happened some time. When whites came in this country here in Zimbabwe, they allocated themselves productive places, giving blacks, the natives, unproductive uh, lands. Even me today, I don't think I will go for places with the arid soil, places without uh, uh, water. I'll look for places that uh, with the rich soils, with a lot of water. But uh, Caleb says, give me this hill country. My father once got a place in south, in south of Ublawayo towards Gwanda. This place had, it was seven hectares. Three hectares was arable. Four hectares, it was hilly. You couldn't farm there. So my father decided to leave that place and sold it. And later, when I realized that my father made a mistake, this, this hill part of the, the land, most probably it had gold. The area around the Gwanda there contains a lot of gold underneath. So by now, we could be rich, most probably there was gold. He refused. He had no courage to take this place. The lesson, ladies and gentlemen, today, in life, despite the difficulties that we have, despite the danger that we see, as long as there is something that is valuable, ask God to be with you. Take courage, have courage, real courage, comes when God is in control of our lives. Without God, you cannot face danger. Without God, you cannot face the difficulties that are before you. You need God. Envelop yourselves in God. Then God will take control of your life like what Caleb did, like what David did. They were courageous because God was the nucleus of their life. There is courage which is not productive, negative courage. When thieves are able to enter a house and steal, that courage comes from the devil. But we want courage, courage that comes from God. The Israelites could not, some Israelites died and failed to enter Canaan. The reason being that they lacked courage that was from God. God's plan was for them to enter Canaan. God had made them cross the Red Sea without any problem. But the devil also had a plan to thwart God's great plan of the Israelites taking possession of Canaan. If you really want courage, ask God, have a relationship with God. May God bless the reading of his word.